Hi everyone, my name is uh, Vijay Chintalapalli. So I'm currently working as a technical architect by EYGDS in India, Bangalore. So today I would be taking you through uh, what are the different extension possibilities that SAP uh, RESTful ABAP programming model can offer you and how can you, uh, you as a you know, partner or uh, uh, any customer, how can you extend your apps? Uh, so let's start uh, with the agenda. So today you, you would be, oh, I would be taking you through a uh, three tire architecture. So this would serve as a basis for the wrapped extensions. And uh, you could also see how you could uh, check the release DPIs. Uh, uh, so now that they, there has been so much talk on ABAP cloud, I do not want to bore you with ABAP cloud again. Then we see the basic wrap architecture and what are the extension possibilities. Then you see three demos and wrap uh, business object extensions, like how can you add a custom field uh, or how can you extend the Fury standard uh, wrap the standard app with a standard standard field and what are the different ways to extend it for managed and unmanaged scenarios. And you could also see uh, a sales order scenario wherein uh, I have extended a behavior uh, extension and uh, you can see some action uh, on the list report. And uh, you can also see what are the different ways of extending the node extension. Say, for example, you want to uh, add an additional uh, facet in the object page. What are the different possibilities? So, yeah, before starting the wrap extensions, you need to know on a high level what is uh, uh, what are the different extension possibilities that ABAP Cloud can offer you. One is the, uh, like, you have the three tier. Uh, architecture wherein uh, the tire one is always using the uh, cloud uh, uh, released APIs. Uh, so in many cases, you will not be uh, finding a uh, BADI or uh, a, uh, a BAPI uh, or a function module or a table. In those scenarios, we do have uh, a mitigation uh, possibility. So you could use something called the tire two uh, model. Say, for example, uh, there is no released uh, uh, class from SAP, uh, no released uh, uh, CDS view from SAP. So you could create something called as a wrapper object, like a wrapper class, wrapper class or a wrapper CDS views on top of uh, the non-released object. And you can uh, still use it in the uh, tier one model. So tier one uh, basically uses only the cloud uh, released uh, APIs. And the uh, major advantage of mitigating the uh, APIs is, let's say SAP has uh, released a uh, cloud ready API class or a cloud ready whitelisted CDS view. Uh, in those scenarios, you could uh, just uh, uh, mitigate or uh, retire the wrapper class which you have created and re replace it with the, uh, uh, replace it with uh, your, uh, released object and let's say the tire three model here sap gives us an exception say for example there are some substitutions validations or bts uh, where you still uh, don't have a possibilities or some screen ex ex enhancements uh, uh, you still go with the classic uh, abap development and uh, let's see like uh, how can you uh, uh, how, how the interplay between these three layers works so uh, let's say uh, you as a uh, partner or a customer, you want to uh, restrict your developers. They use only the tier one development. There is a role which is available. So you can assign this role to only certain developers so that uh, the tier two and tier three developments can be only developed by those developers. The remaining developers will uh, go with the ABAP cloud uh, developments. So. So this is how the interplay works. Like uh, say, for example, the tier one will always use the public uh, uh, released uh, APIs. And say, for example, in case of uh, no released APIs, then you go through the tier two. And there is also a possibility that from tier three, uh, also you can either access the whitelisted or you can go via the tier two models. So this is just an interplay. Uh, why this is important for you before starting with the wrap extensions is to understand the released objects. Say for example, uh, I get a requirement uh, to uh, extend a wrap based application. So there is something called a uh, released tree. Uh, so th there are two ways or uh, there are different ways to find a released uh, API. 
Uh, one is uh, you can create, build your own released uh, tree in your Eclipse. Or there is one cloudification re repository which has been released uh, in GitHub. So you could uh, use this. Say, for example, you have a function module with job open. And uh, this will su suggest the successor uh, uh, class for your function module. Similarly, uh, say, for example, you want to extend a CDS view. Uh, sorry, CDS uh, uh, view entity for any standard wrap based application. You could go and check in this repository uh, how uh, whether this is cloud extensible or not. So let me just show you what I mean. So if you see here, I have built my repository of released objects. So I have given a filter of extend in cloud development. So now I open the core data services. Say, we, for example, I want to uh, extend the behavior definition of a wrap object. So I go here. This already gives me some list of objects where there is an extensible keyword. So by this way, uh, using the released objects, you could find uh, wh what are the different ways I could extend my wrap application. And the next one is you can also find uh, uh, what are the different CDS uh, entities that are available in in-app user extensibility. By this way, you could also make out that you can uh, extend your uh, wrap based applications using the key user apps. Say, for example, you want to add a custom field. In those scenarios, if, if it, in case you don't know the business context, you could also go this way. So that is why it is important that you know uh, how to find uh, the released objects and how to build the released object tree. So now let's uh, jump into uh, what are the different ways that we can uh, mitigate the APIs. So there are two ways. One is uh, the CDS views. Uh, so say for example, the CDS view is not yet released. A custom CDS view can be built on top of it. And uh, say for example, the CDS view, which is currently available, it uh, also associates to non-release CDS views. In those scenarios, you need to uh, again build uh, the wrapper uh, CDS views on top of it. And uh, you have to, uh, uh, so the mitigation happens when you do the release contract in the properties to C1 and you check, you do the check boxes of in-app extensions and cloud extensibility. I will show you in the meanwhile. So if the CDS view doesn't exist at all and uh, you have a database table, you still need to create the CDS view and wrap on top of it. Uh, similarly, if you have a function module, like I mentioned, function modules and wrappies, BAPIs, you need to create a uh, wrapper class on top of it. So I've also added a tutorial which is provided in by SAP. So this gives uh, very good uh, uh, insights on the same. So now let's jump on to the ABAP RESTful uh, programming model. So uh, let's uh, see what is ABAP RESTful program, uh, what is ABAP RESTful application programming model before going into the extensions of them. So it basically consists consists of three different layers. One is the data model so, and behavior. So what is data model? Uh, say for example, uh, you have a sales order or a product. So it is a business object. So uh, how you model the business objects between uh, say, for example, you have a sales order I, uh, header and items, you have the relationships. Uh, so all those will be done at the data model layer. And what is behavior? So uh, how should my uh, model uh, act? So should it be transactional? Should it be read only? Or uh, should I add some additional actions on top of it? So all those will be, uh, uh, defined in the behavior uh, uh, of the data model. Uh, next, coming to the business service provisioning. So in this, uh, this majorly consists of service definition and service binding. Uh, what is service definition? Uh, so say, for example, you have uh, had so many data models, but all the apps doesn't need all the data models. So in this, you can just def define the scope of uh, the uh, data models that needs to be projected or exposed. And coming to the service binding, so ABAP supports both the SAP consumer and uh, 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 you, you can also consume and uh, you can also uh, expose the uh, data binding. So in this scenarios uh, uh, of wrap, you can just consume the O data uh, the services. So the services can be consumed in three ways: web APIs, events, and 
SAP UIs. So there is also INA and query protocol, which is possible. Now let's jump into the extension possibilities. And uh, so after the service binding, uh, usually we either go with web APIs or SAP Fiori UIs. So when we go with SAP Fiori UIs, uh, coming to the customer requirements, uh, we generally want to have you know, additional features on top of these. So how do, uh, what are the different possibilities of extensions uh, that uh, RAP programming uh, provides? So as you already know, uh, RAP is the heart of ABAP cloud and uh, RAP, RAP provides like upgrade stable developments and uh, RAP- uh, Vijay? Which, which yes. Are you sharing the correct slides? Yes. Yes. Can you see the... Okay, now we are seeing RESTful application programming model extensions. Yes, I was about to come to this slide. Yeah, this is the slide. You're right. Yeah, if you want to share your ATT, you have to switch. Yes, I would be switching in a minute. Okay. Yeah, so there are like uh, three, uh, yeah, let me skip this slide. Yeah, so there are like uh, three different uh, models that SAP basically provides uh, on the extensions. First is a basic advanced and uh, node extensibility. So on the basic ones, we will be generally having uh, the data model extensions. Say for example, you want to add a, a field uh, or uh, you want to add a customer standard field, you could use the data model ex extensions and in the advanced, you have determinations and validations. And say, for example, you want to add an additional facet or nodes in the object page of Fiori app, you would be going with the node extensibility. So let me start uh, with an example of uh, what are the different ways of uh, field extensions that are possible. So the first one is, uh, let's say you have, uh, 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 understood that the app is a uh, restful ABAP programming model based and what are the different possibilities to add a custom field? So the Z field. So now uh, RAP has two different scenarios, managed and unmanaged. So uh, let's go with the uh, managed scenario for the time being. So for, for the managed scenario, we go and check if there is any in-app uh, extension based context available in the custom fields app. So say for example, we have the uh, uh, context available, we do it using the custom fields. In case we don't have it, if you are in on-premise or uh, a private cloud, you still have the possibilities either to extend using CDS uh, view extensions or using the CI includes. Or in case of unmanaged scenarios, uh, in it depends on the query type, whether you are using uh, like in the query implementation class, you are using a dynamic query or a static query. So I will show you in the demo. Uh, maybe I can just skip this part. Similarly, uh, the same thing follows uh, for standard extensions as well. So let me just demo you uh, one of the field extensions. So for my demo, I would be uh, going with the manage uh, promise to pay app. So uh, I would like to add uh, a uh, custom field in the manage uh, promise to pay app. So one more, uh, uh, just a hint uh, from my side. So if you want to know whether this is a RAP based extension, uh, RAP based service or not, uh, most of the times you see UI underscore, uh, you can blindly go and think this is a RAP based uh, or data service. So uh, also sometimes uh, you don't see UI, but most of the cases you see uh, UI. So uh, in this case, uh, what I have done, uh, I have uh, gone to the uh, custom fields and logic. I searched uh, for an extension, if uh, any available for this app. So now I, for the promise to pay, I found a business context. I have created a custom field. And now I went inside and I, I checked if uh, my app uh, is available in the context. I have just enabled this app. And now I go to manage uh, promise to pay. So I, I see this field coming. 
So there is no UI adoption required in this case, uh, in case you want to add it in the list report, uh, but only in the case of you want to add in the object page header, in those cases, you might still need to, uh, Uh, which I yeah. we don't hear you. You don't hear me. Ah, Hello? now you're back. Yeah, no, I Are was you... just uh, changing the view. So now you uh, see. Are you, are you ADT? Because we are still seeing your slides. Oh God, I was showing Fury. Sorry. <sighs> Thanks. Thanks for uh, letting me know. Yeah. Can you see my screen now? Yes. yes. So uh, for the, so now I, I, uh, I'm just repeating whatever I just said, like I go and find the context for the promise to pay. Uh, I found a context in the in-app extensions and uh, I, in, I added a text field just for my extension purpose. And I went to UIs and reports. I have enabled it and published it. So now I go back to the app uh, manage promise to pay. Now I go to the list. I see now the field has come. So uh, with this, uh, I was able to add the custom field here uh, in case uh, we want to uh, like add the details of this field, we have to enable this uh, in the header section or uh, item section of the object page and we can start uh, uh, inputting the data to this field. So this is one of the scenario for the custom fields. Now let's look at, uh, uh, now let's look at a scenario where uh, we would go with the unmanaged app. Uh, so I went and found the Fiery process receivable app so the requirement is to add a additional standard field payment terms in my invoice tab so how did i go with it i mean while the app opens so i will just open the service i go the service definition So my requirement is to add uh, an additional field uh, in this uh, in this list uh, of the object page in this facet. So uh, I have opened directly the uh, root view of this invoice uh, TP. And now I see that uh, they have used the unmanaged uh, query scenario in this scenario. But however, this is masked as a, a projection on uh, one of the R view. So what in this scenario is what we have to do, we have to extend uh, this view and also we go inside this class and understand what this, uh, uh, where this class is querying. So if you see, uh, there is a method get all invoices. So here you see the get invoices from memory. So if you see this one is a dynamic query and it is uh, using this P underscore uh, collections memory. So uh, in this scenarios, what we have to do, uh, we have to extend this mask view and we have to also extend the 
uh, view uh, view entity where the uh, selection is happening inside the query class. So if we extend at uh, both the positions, then only the data flows. Uh, in case you just extend this view alone, where the original entity is being shown, uh, it still shows the field, but uh, it doesn't really uh, shows the values. So you, we have to extend both the views. Uh, say, for example, I wanted to bring in the payment terms. So I, I first extended the view where the data is being fetched in the query class. And uh, later I have extended this class as, uh, this uh, method as well. So I've also extended this. So in these scenarios, uh, it sh uh, the value shows uh, when both are extended only. So uh, we have to be careful in choosing whether we are choosing uh, a managed query or unmanaged uh, query. So if you see now the payment terms. So this field was not uh, in the app before. Now you see the field is coming and the values are also coming. Yeah, this is about the field extension. Net, next, let's go to the behavior extension. So what is a behavior extension? Uh, ideally, if you want to add an additional behavior to the original BO, say for example, uh, for a sales order, if you would like to add some, uh, set some latest delivery date and uh, uh, in these scenarios, we'll be going and extending the behavior uh, definition. So the, the only thing which you have to look at is uh, the extensible keyword. If SAP has not provided this extensible keyword, the behavior definition cannot be extended. So this is one of the scenario where I will de just demo on the sales order. So the scenario is uh, to set the latest delivery date. So I have done two uh, two things here. Uh, this is a combination of custom field uh, and a uh, behavior extension. Like uh, so, first what I have done, I have added a custom field of latest delivery date. So if you see uh, this latest delivery date, this is added as a custom custom field uh, in the sales order and uh, using the in-app extension, I will just show you what I have done for this. Yeah, so if you see here, there is a button uh, that has been enabled so uh, when I click on this button, I want to uh, update this latest delivery date uh, so that my uh, uh, accounting team who are checking the sales order can have a report on this. So with, I have also added that uh, it cannot be less than today's date. See, for example, you are uh, click uh, like entering uh, uh, as sixth, it shows a error message, latest delivery date cannot be less than today's date. And next one, uh, say for example, I'm uh, adding as uh, 10th. So let's see what happens. So it updates and gives an uh, success message, standard or, uh, order 418 has been saved and the latest delivery date has been updated. So what have I done for this? Uh, so I first went and found the uh, behavior uh, uh, definition, the standard behavior definition of sales order. So, yeah, so I have created the uh, 
extinction for the standard behavior definition. Like I mentioned, it had the keyword extensible. That's why I was able to extend. So I've added, I've uh, given this action and also I have give, uh, uh, just in the pop-up, uh, we get this date field for that I've given an abstract entity. And uh, once uh, this is uh, done here, I've implemented the imp uh, sales order uh, implementation action. So it generates the method automatically. What have I done here? I've read the keys, uh, I've looked at the keys and I have got the, uh, uh, I've got this date, which has been set in the pop-up. Uh, if, if the date is less than today's date, I've just uh, raised an error message here and I've deleted the keys in case of uh, wrong uh, uh, date entered. And in case of the uh, date is valid, I have read the sales order uh, with the uh, latest delivery date uh, Z field. And then I looped at the uh, sales order entity and then I appended the uh, values to the, the latest date value to this field. And then I have used the EML to modify the R underscore sales order. And then I have passed the result to the result value so that you see that success message that the sales order has been updated successfully. So uh, uh, actually there is one additional thing that has to be done. So for example, you if you give this, uh, action here directly, it doesn't show up in the screen. So for that, what I have done, I have extended the uh, metadata extension of the standard sales order. So I have changed the metadata layer to customer and I have uh, given the action. So I've given this action along with the uh, other actions, which uh, along with the other actions which are available so that uh, the UI annotations understand that it has to show there uh, in the screen. So this is how we can, uh, you know, uh, do an end-to-end -end scenario of using a custom field, using custom fields and logic app. And then uh, maybe I'll just also show the custom field what I have created. So if you see, this was the field we were using. So I've just created this field and uh, enabled in the UI and reports for the sales order. Yeah. So we can also make it read only if needed, uh, but uh, yeah, for the time being, I've uh, given it non-read only since I wanted data in this field. So by this way, uh, this is upgrade stable, uh, whatever you are doing and uh, yeah, this is how we can do the end-to-end -end scenario of uh, behavior extension. Uh, Surin, uh, I think I'm done with the time, right? Or can I extend? Yes, we have we have one minute left. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, then I'll quickly run through the node extensions. So what are node extensions? Uh, basically, uh, say for example, right, I have a uh, standard uh, Fury app and I would like to add an additional node and I want to add an additional facet uh, here. Uh, in these scenarios, I would generally go for a node extension. So node extensions uh, can be done in the below ways, uh, like you, you have to uh, extend uh, the base model and uh, once the model is extended, the extension node has to be added in the uh, main uh, CDS consumption entity. Once that is done, if you want CRUD operations on that, you can add that in the behavior imp uh, implementation. And once that is done, you have to also extend the service exposure and add it there. So I will just show one demo for which uh, I have uh, extended. <clears throat> so if you see the manage sales order app, uh, I have added a additional tab uh, called FI items here. So, okay, the data is not loading for this sales order, uh, but what have I done? Uh, I have just extended the uh, sales order uh, consumption, the main consumption view, uh, consumption CDS entity, and added uh, this new uh, consumption entity. And then I have just redirected this as a child. And also in the metadata extension,
So in the metadata extension, I have added this facet uh, as underscore fi items. Uh, by this way, you can uh, uh, add this additional facet using wrap programming. Additionally, uh, there is a small limitation here uh, in case of business services extension. If you, if you want to expose this uh, field uh, additionally out of it, uh, the business service needs to have the uh, keyword as extensible. For sales order, we do not see that uh, happening, the uh, behavior service uh, definition. So probably that would be the limitation. The fields are not shown here. Uh, there are other ways uh, that we can do using BAS. So I have a blog written on this. So you can go through the coding is available. So if you want to add an additional facet, you can create an additional OData service. So using the adaptation project, uh, you can add, uh, uh, you can just expose this as a separate OData service. And then using the BAS, you can consume this OData service on the adaptation project. And you can use this adaptation project to add an addition section. And now you see the open items are here. So there are multiple ways to do it. For now, since uh, limitations with SAP not providing the extensible keyword and service definition, so the best approach would be to go with the BAS uh, based approach, which is uh, easier. But it requires a bit of UIFI coding as well. Yeah, I am through with my uh, demo. Uh, sorry, I've run a bit faster in the, yeah, since I didn't have much time. Thank you very much for your talk.